Hi everyone, today I want to share 10 Blender 2.80 tips that helped me switching from the older Blender 2.79 to the latest version. Blender 2.80 has a lot of changes and I won't be able to cover all of them in this video, but once I started playing around with it, I had trouble finding some of the most crucial shortcuts I've been using in 2.79. So the purpose of this video is to help you out in making the switch as soon as possible and not to waste any more time on finding those important tools you've been using so far. Now enough talking, let's just jump into it. Tip number one, the changes of the left and right mouse clicks. So in the previous Blender versions, left mouse clicking was moving the 3D cursor around while the right clicking was selecting the object. Now in the new Blender version, right click gives you an access to the contextual menu while the left click select things around. Now I know there are some users that will want to change it back as it was in the previous versions, but I personally don't recommend doing that, especially as you can see the left clicking allows you accessing different things here. For example, if I left click and hold, we can change the way those tools here work. This little arrow here indicates that, while the right clicking gives me an access to different menus here depending on the mode I'm using. So let's say in sculpt mode, I'm able to change the brush settings in vertex or texture paint. I'm able to change the colors and let's say in edit mode. Well, that's a whole different story and we'll get there in a second. Tip number two, selecting and deselecting everything. I don't know about you, but Oftentimes when I open Blender, I had this habit of selecting and deselecting everything. And right now, when I press A and A again, as I used to do in the previous Blender version, nothing really happens. So, well, A still selects everything, but to deselect stuff, you have to press Alt A. Or when you press A to select everything, you have to press A twice very fast, like this. Tip number three, shading types and origin points. Well, in the previous Blender version, these were available under the T menu, but as you can see right now, there is way less options. So to access the shading types, we just right click and select shade smooth, shade flat. Same with the origin points, set origin, and the settings here are basically the same. Tip number four, the search menu. So in the previous Blender versions, you were probably using the search menu when you couldn't find an option and it was available under the spacebar. Now, when I press the spacebar in new Blender, you can see we are launching the animation playback. So to find the search menu, we have to press F3 key from now on. Tip number five, the full screen option. So in the previous Blender versions, you could have entered the full screen by pressing Ctrl and up arrow. But now, as you can see, nothing changes. Also, when I hold Ctrl and press left and right arrow, which allowed us changing the working layouts, nothing changes as well. So the work layouts are available here upon the left clicking, but to enter the full screen mode, we have to press Ctrl and spacebar. So this is the first way we can launch the full screen, but you can also press Control, Alt and Spacebar and that gives you, well, even better full screen preview. The next few tips will refer mostly to the edit mode, so let's enter it by pressing the tab key. This didn't change as you can see, but now tip number six is changing between the vertex, edge and faces within the edit mode. So previously we were using control tab shortcut for that, but now as you can see, we can only access different modes in Blender. So in order to get to vertex, edge and face, we have to use one, two and three keys on the keyboard. One, two, three. Tip number seven, finding the specials menu in the edit mode. So in the previous Blender versions, we could find this menu under the W key. Once I press it right now, you can see what we can only have is switching between the modes here. So in order to access the new specials menu, we have to right click, but the menu you see here is dependent on the mode you have selected first. So in face mode, my specials menu will look a little bit different when I'm in edge selection mode. And same 
goes with the vertices. By the way, we still have the Control V menu for vertices, Control E for edges, and Control F for faces. So I think the context of these menus stays more or less the same, but there are some differences like unsubdivide here and yeah, the lack of unsubdivide in this menu. Tip number eight, fighting the remove doubles option. I don't know about you, but I was using it quite a lot in the previous Blender versions, especially when I wanted to make sure that my geometry is clean and there aren't any loose vertices flying around. Well, the previous Blender version, you could find this tool under the specials menu, which is not available anymore. So now you have to go to the merge menu, which is still under the Alt M shortcut. And here the option by distance is basically the old good remove doubles. And by the way, you can also go to the mesh menu, go down to the cleanup section and here you can find merge by distance as well together with other mesh cleanup tools. Tip number nine, flipping normals. So in the previous Blender versions, if you wanted to be sure that the normals of your geometry are correct, you were simply entering the edit mode and pressing Ctrl N key to flip them uniformly. Well, now you're creating a new file this way. So to access the normals menu, you have to press Alt N. And here you can find many, many different options. And by the way, the new Blender allows you to very nicely preview the normals of your geometry. You simply enter the menu here and go to the face orientation. So right now, when I select one of the faces, press Alt N and flip the normals, they are marked with this red color, which is very nice and clean. And tip number 10, transformation orientations and pivot points. In the previous Blender versions, when you were pressing the dot and comma keys, you were switching between the 3D cursor and bounding box as pivot points. Right now, when I press comma, you can see I'm able to change the transformation orientation. Let's say we are going to switch to normals, rotate this object, and as you can see, the gizmo position also changes. Now, when I move the object here and press the dot key, you can see I am able to switch the pivot points. So let's select 3D cursor, press R to rotate, and the pivot point has been changed. Now, two more bonus tips to speed up your Blender 2.80 workflow. The Z key, which allows you to change different shading modes, especially the look depth, uh, Preview is very good if you are setting up the shaders and you want to do them in real time. By the way, please remember we have now three different rendering engines and I prefer using Eevee when setting up the materials. We have also the standard wireframe view, solid view and the rendered view here on top. The second bonus pro tip is the shift spacebar shortcut, which gives you an access to the T menu, which is available here on the left. So depending on the mode you're using, let's say in the edit mode, when I'm pressing the shift spacebar, I'm able to access all of the tools that are also visible here on the left. So that's it for this video. Thanks everyone for watching. Please remember you can support Blender development by donating to Blender Foundation. Also, you can support the development of this channel by checking out the Chocoforge store and getting some of our Blender assets. Well, that's it for the advertisement. Stay awesome and see you in the next video. Bye bye.